On this installment of the Curator's Corner, we've got a World War II alarm clock called a war alarm. Most people know that things like sugar, meats, tires, gasoline uh, was rationed in World War II, but in order to conserve essential war materials like brass, all non-war production of clocks ceased in July of 1942. People uh, continued to use the clocks that they already had, but over time these began to wear out, break, or were broken, which meant that workers who were expected to be in war factories producing the planes and tanks and bullets needed to win the war were showing up late and production was being affected. So the government, the War Production Board, uh, decided that a limited number of companies would be allowed to make uh, alarm clocks geared towards the war workers. Uh, these companies were Telecron of Ashland, Massachusetts, West Clocks of LaSalle, Illinois, and the Gilbert Clock Company of Winstead, Connecticut. This particular example was made by West Clocks. The War Production Board also specified that only seven pounds of brass for every 1,000 uh, clocks could be used, whereas pre-war production used about 300 pounds of brass for every 1,000 clocks, which meant the companies had to be pretty innovative with uh, the design for these new clocks. The War Production Board also requested that no one buy a war alarm unless it satisfied a real need, not merely a want, wish, or whim. Uh, the first clocks, uh, war alarms, were introduced in April of 1943, and the cases were made out of pressed wood or paper mache, uh, like you'd find on an egg carton, and then later on metal cases were added in late 1943 or maybe early 1944, and bakelite plastic. The paper mache and metal clocks sold for $1.65, exclusive of taxes, and uh, it's marked on the back of the clock as such. The Bakelite clocks are a little more expensive at $4.85 because they had an electrical movement in them. West Clock made thousands of the alarm clocks with paper mache cases, but customers were told that after the war was over they could bring it back and for an additional $0.25 cents, it would be refitted with a metal case. By May of 1944, uh, the War Production Board had eased up a little bit, materials were not so scarce, and they allowed companies to begin making commercial uh, clocks for sale again as well. And these were basically war alarms that simply had the company logo added to them. And those began making their appearance in September of 1944. As you can see on this example, it's clearly marked here that it's a war alarm. Uh, there's no manufacturer's logo on there, and that was done intentionally um, so that there wouldn't be competition between the companies and everybody would, would be on the same level playing field. Uh, you can hear it ticking. This clock still maintains excellent time after all these years. Uh, we'll try the alarm out now. And the alarm functions perfectly. This is a, a well-made clock. It's clearly withstood the test of time, and it shows the ingenuity that American companies could could come up with when they really needed to. Now this war alarm is one of thousands of artifacts we have on display at the Miami Valley Military History Museum. We are located in Building 120 on the grounds of the Dayton VA Medical Center and we hope you'll come out and see this war alarm along with all the other neat things that we have to offer to you. Thanks.